Hi there, oh, welcome to my views and news. Three news stories. Firstly, some Eritrean asylum seekers in Europe are in trouble. At least one has been told that uh, she might be deported to Rwanda. Eritreans risk their lives when they start their journey from Eritrea to enter the EU and now they are facing the risk of deportation to another African country. Secondly, David Gebrigizab, the brother of uh, TPLF Deputy Chairman Munjarino, arrested in Dubai, the UAE. And now work is being done for the deportation of the man, but some Tigrayan activists have launched a campaign against the deportation of David Gebrigizabar. Why? Early two dawn strikes, which I reported last week in the Amhara region, being confirmed by several news outlets. For fun of fighter skill in those attacks, because when I reported, several viewers said that the attacks were purely on civilian targets. So, what is international media reporting? I want to share the reports with you, and then you can compare my reporting and their reporting. Uh, firstly, viewers, uh, Eritreans, thousands of Eritreans flee their country each year. And they, their destination is Europe mainly. They want to reach Europe. They take different routes. They pay money to human traffickers. They risk their lives. Some die on their way to Europe. Some manage to reach Europe. And they reach Europe, obviously, they apply for asylum. And they have to go through several countries to re reach Europe. Though Now, Europe is trying to curb the flow of uh, these migrants from Eritrea, from other parts of Africa. So it's uh, a very difficult task for uh, an asylum seeker to enter Europe. Now, they used to enter Europe and uh, they, they used to believe that they were safe and they would file asylum cases and then uh, they will have documents. But things have changed now. Uh, we know that uh, UK is working with Rwanda to deport uh, asylum seekers, refugees, illegal migrants. And one was deported a few days ago. Thousands are set to be deported this year. Despite several campaigns launched, uh, UK government is adamant that it will deport these illegal migrants to Rwanda. What will happen after their deportation to Rwanda? Obviously, they won't be able to return to the UK, it seems. We heard a few days ago that uh, Swiss government was also considering similar uh, measures. Some Swiss MPs urged the government to uh, reach agreements with the third party, Rwanda, UK style agreements to deport Eritreans whose asylum cases have been rejected. We don't know what Swiss government will do, but the Eritrean asylum seekers in the UK are in trouble. They are also being told that they could be deported to Rwanda. Nora is one Eritrean asylum seeker in the UK. And she has been told by British authorities that she could be deported to Rwanda. Her clips are in circulation. She can be seen crying, saying that uh, had she known that she would be deported to Rwanda, she would never have left her country, Eritrea. So hard times ahead for Eritreans who want to flee their country now. Europe won't give asylum to them the way they have been getting asylum. Their cases will... Uh, pass through strict uh, scrutiny and it is going to be an uphill task for these Eritrean refugees to enter Europe and to get asylum. So what will they do now? Because the situation in Eritrea is not improving. 
in terms of uh, job creation in terms of uh, prosperity in terms of development in terms of respect for rights of people in terms of liberties nothing seems to be improving so what will these erratians do if they live in eratia they'll be in national service for indefinite period if they flee into neighboring countries no one knows what will happen there to them will they be accepted or not and neighboring countries are not very developed so uh, we're seeing uh, hard times ahead for these eratians uh, in future let's hope that uh, the european governments reconsider their plans to deport the asylum seekers who are already in europe secondly there was a campaign in support of monjorino's brother monjorino is a deputy chairman of the tpl he worked as uh, the deputy president of the tegra region to patle were ge brigizabar a veteran uh, tegra fighter her brother has been arrested in the ue david ge brigizabar a businessman why was he arrested for no investigation underway and now preparations are being made to deport if gabriel gizabar to ethiopia reportedly reportedly and already we are seeing a campaign in support of the with gabriel gizabar against the deportation campaign launched by some tegrans not all tegrans some uh, tegrai uh, people uh, journalists stay in touch with me then support of deportation they say that they with gabriel gizabar uh should be tried at a court investigation should be impartial but if he's been arrested by interpol by some other authority abroad at least he will be brought back and uh, tplf and federal government tegra and federal government are not on very bad terms these days so he can get a fair trial in ethiopia others say that no he will face persecution in ethiopia his deportation should be stopped so they have launched a campaign social media campaign petitions are being signed uh, and being sent to the relevant authorities in the uk and to interpol they say that uh, david gizabar's uh, safety could be undermined if he is deported to ethiopia let's see uh, ethiopian judicial system is not very ideal we know what is happening in the case of uh, judicial system and investigation agencies everything is uh, under the thumb of the government no transparency see what is happening in the case of uh, murder inquiry into the murder of uh, patur gasa uh, where we are seeing uh, investigators harassing human rights commission of ethiopia investigators witnesses being harassed family members being arrested yes they with gibri gizabar might suffer if he returns to ethiopia but his if his arrest is a political arrest then we can say that he could be persecuted in ethiopia if it's not a political arrest then obviously why would the government uh, persecute him early was two don strikes in the amhara region being confirmed by bbc and deutsche welle i reported that last week one was carried out by the open air force in kevet north shoa other one in mzazo according to deutsche welle dwtv the don strike in mzazo killed four people three were fano members and bbc says that uh, in the attack carried out in kavat teachers were killed at a school in kavat i reported about deaths of fano fighters in kavat don't strike to i stand by my report yes some fano fighters were killed bbc says a parent teacher meeting was underway at the school on sunday when the attack was carried out 
which is not the case by the way one of fighters were there on sunday at the school using the school as uh, a base when the don't strike was conducted teachers live there reportedly they, they live in the premises of the school so one of fighters were killed in both these strikes people say that uh, military is killing civilians one of fighters are not targets civilians are targets target is military fano fighters are targeted of these don't strikes it does not mean that civilians are not dying civilians are dying too in, in collateral damage i said that some teachers died too in that attack don't strike on the school in kavath yes because they were there uh, and same is the case with the don't strike in mezazo too fano killed and civilians are pro fano news outlets only talk about civilian deaths in these uh, non strikes government remains silent when it speaks it says no 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 civilian skill only fano fighters skill truth is in between thank you for watching